Given away by her biological mother at three months old, diagnosed with ADHD, kicked out of a prestigious high school, but today she is a motivational speaker, a teacher, an author, and a businesswoman with a doctorate to boot. Today, we fill in the gaps. My guest is Dr. Sally Ann Gray. I am Archibald Gordon. This is Profile. Dr. Sally and Gray, welcome to Profile. Thank you for having me. And we are absolutely delighted. You have a wonderful story. Educator, yes. an author, yes. a businesswoman, an entrepreneur. Yes. Um, and also fascinating because of the different kinds of challenges that you overcame. So overcame early challenges, including attention deficit, hyperactivity Activity. disorder. Yes. People know it as ADHD. Um, Expulsion from high school, yes, told sir. not to come back to a very prominent high school. Not we'll get to return. To, not to return, <laughs> no come back. But you would return to that school as an educator. I sure would. And do, to, do really, really well. Also headed overseas. And some of the work that we're talking about now, the work as an author, yes. also forming your own business, occurring overseas. And congratulations, by the way, in the last Thank you. year, uh, academically yes. becoming Dr. Gray yes. as well. First of all, how does that feel? Um, really accomplished. Um, I feel really accomplished, um, you know, because a lot of people told me that I would never amount to anything, especially educators. So having achieved my um, doctorate in educational leadership is just a testament to me that all things are possible. From the start, a lot of challenges in your life, even at a point at which you would not have been able to um, know them. Mm -hmm. And I and I am I speaking specifically here to the fact that as at three months out, mm -hmm. your mother was headed here. Heading as it turns right out, here at the RGR Communications Group yes. to say to people. Um, I can't take care of my daughter. Take us through the story. So as it would have been told to me by my adopted father for the purpose of the story, but he is my daddy, right? So my adopted um, father, Selburn Sharp, he was driving right along here, Lynnhurst Road, and he saw a young baby, a young lady with a young baby in her hand, and it was drizzling. So he, being the good, kind, compassionate person he is, he was like, let me stop and ask this young lady if she needs help or a ride. When he stops, she says, yes, actually, I'm trying to get down the street to RJR on a radio program. I, he I heard them saying, if you have young babies, don't throw them away. Don't throw them in the dumpster. If you're frustrated, mothers, bring them here. So she was actually trying to make her way, way to RJR, as he would have shared with her. And at the time, my dad said to her, listen, my wife and I are unable to have children. Don't harm the baby. We will take the baby and care for her and my dad will even tell the story of how after they exchanged some particulars in those days there were no phones so he's an educator but he also sold insurance on the side with mutual life at the time you, you remember mutual life yes. back in the day so he took out his little mutual life book now and wrote down some information all the information she gave him and she had a little baby bag it had my birth paper from the Kingston Public Hospital and it had some few clothing items to include a little knitted sweater and my parents kept that knitted sweater for me um, up to this day you know so um, and then once she left he placed me in the front passenger seat and then barricaded me in with the bag because remember he was driving about his business he doesn't have any physical children of his own so he would not have had um you know, a car seat or anything. And then when he took me home to his wife, he told her this story and she was like, wow. But interesting enough, my mother, um, just three months prior to that incident, had her third and final miscarriage. And the doctors at, at UWE told her that she would never have children. So she was actually on her knees praying for a baby. And 
And here I am. So it is providence and assets, providence, providence etc. Yes. So now you're raised by these two people and yes. they also share their story with you. So you know from the beginning. I know from the beginning. But the thing is, once I got to grade six and, you know, I'm a common entrance baby, right? That's how old I am. I did common this entrance. This was the primary exit exam, by yes. the way, for those of us old enough to know it. <laughs> yeah. And so when I was like, you know, in grade five, I did common entrance in grade five. I recognized that my life last name was different from that as my parents. That was the first consciousness I had. And so then I started asking questions. So I would have been around 10, 11. And it was over the series of about three years from, you know, 11, 12, 13, that they revealed bits and pieces. And so I don't believe that their intention was ever to hide it. But, you know, right time, right place. And we just want to make sure that, you know, well, I think they wanted to make sure that it wasn't going to impact my development. And they but were treating it you, it, it was no different. You were their child. They were treating you with love. Oh, gosh. So fast forward to St. Andrew High School for girls. Um, so that's my alma mater. And when I started sharing my story about five years ago, I literally had friends from Andrew's messaging me like, Sally, Sharpie, I know your real father. Like, because his last name is Sharp. You know, my parents' last name is Sharp. My last name was Sellers prior to being married. And so they were like, they, you know, that's his name. And they're like, Sharpie is not your real father. And the reason why it was shocking for so many people is because never could you ever detect that I was not a biological child. I mean... The trauma I faced in my teenage years had nothing to do with their level of care for me. It right. was just coming face to face with my own fate and understanding, you know, wow, my mother gave me away and I think it did a number on me. And that's why I talk about mindset so much because I don't think people understand how childhood trauma you know, even through a seemingly normal childhood can impact the way you move, the way you think and the way you do things once you graduate into adulthood. And I had to go to therapy. I uh, went to I went to therapy. I, I, I want to touch on that. We have about a minute to go to the break. But just to close out the parent story, mm -hmm. never met your biological mother. Um, but did meet your bi biological father. Still have a, a bit of a relationship yes. with him as well. Yes. But for all intents and purposes, the people who raised you treated you really, really well, just like their own child, never ne any sort of distinction. No. So why then the sort of trauma that are you, you're talking about in the teenage years when you moved on from primary school to St. Andrew's High? So once I got to high school and just recognizing the level of relationship that a lot of the girls had with biological parents I think I went in and I told myself a story because that's what came out of the counseling so I told myself this story that my biological mother didn't love me and didn't want me when in fact she could have been giving me giving me away because she recognized that she just genuinely didn't have the means to care for me and maybe I wouldn't be here right now right so maybe she did it out of love but at the time I told myself that story and so just observing all these other girls from very affluent families and you know they're they're like these are their biological parents i made it become a problem i, I want to me. talk about how that actually manifested in your life but we have to take our first break <laughs> On profile, my guest is Dr. Sally Ann Gray. She is an, edu an educator, she's an author, and she's an entrepreneur. And we're back with you on the other side of these messages. 